Hi class, I just want to go over cellular respiration as an overview real quick again because I know a lot of you are kind of confused. And so I'm going to sh present it in a slightly different picture, but it really it's the same picture that I've been showing. But this may help some of you who have been struggling with this. All right, so glycolysis is the first step of cellular respiration, always and for forever. It's always going to happen whether or not there's oxygen. And so the main thing that happens in glycolysis is that we have glucose. Get a color here. Right. So we have glucose, C6H12O6. Now, in order to get glycolysis started, we need to invest some energy. All right. Remember, I talked about investing money into a bank. You got to spend money to make money. So we're going to spend two ATP to get this whole process going, which is kind of counterproductive because we actually want to make ATP and we're going in the hole to start. We're going in debt, but that's okay. We're going to make a bunch of ATP here. So once ATP is used, it forms ADP, and then the phosphates got broken off. Sometimes you could write the plus P over there to represent the phosphates, but I'm going to leave it off to make it a little bit simpler for you. So it forms ADP. Now, glucose is going to start getting ripped apart. The word glycolysis means sugar breaking. So we're going to break it down, and we're going to get this other molecule called pyruvate. So pyruvate is a smaller sugar. It's kind of half of glucose. But in the process of making it, we're actually going to make some ATP from ADP. And total, we actually make four total, but we have to subtract it from the two that we started with. So we have to pay back our debt. So really, we're only netting two ATP, even though we are making four of them there. As glucose is getting broken down, some electrons and protons get stripped from the molecules. And so we have to pick those up because they're very useful to make energy in the end, in the ETC. And so as some electrons and protons get ripped off, we're going to have an electron carrier come in and pick them up. So NAD is going to come and pick up these two, three passengers, and then form NADH. And so that is glycolysis. So this step from glucose to pyruvate is step number one called glycolysis. Now, after glycolysis, we have a couple of options. Pyruvate has two of them. It could go down here and do a couple things down here, or it could go straight through all the circles and all the way down here and the rest of the steps. I'm going to pretend that oxygen is available. And so if oxygen is available and O2 is present, we're going to continue and go this way into what's called aerobic this is aerobic respiration. And aerobic respiration is broken down into a couple more steps. The second step that I want to talk about is what I term the conversion reaction. In the conversion reaction, we're going to convert pyruvate. And we're going to convert it into this stuff called acetyl coenzyme A, acetyl-CoA. To get to acetyl-CoA from pyruvate, we need to break down pyruvate some more. The first thing that we're going to break off pyruvate is a carbon, and the carbon is going to leave as carbon dioxide, and we're going to breathe it out. Something's going to replace the carbon that was ripped off, though, and so this arrow pointing in is showing what's going to replace the carbon that was ripped off, and it's coenzyme A. So this coenzyme A comes in to replace where the carbon was left. Now, as pyruvate was being converted into acetyl-CoA, we had a couple of electrons and a proton that was ripped off. And so we need to use those later on. So NAD is going to pick those guys up. And when it does, it's called NAD, oh, NAD plus. It's going to be called NADH. And it, sorry, that's a plus over here, too. And that is a conversion step. So glycolysis, glucose to pyruvate. We make a couple ATP, an electron carrier. We're going to convert pyruvate in the conversion reaction to acetyl-CoA. And that's only if oxygen is present, in which we go this way. We actually breathe out some carbon dioxide. We make an electron carrier, and we make acetyl-CoA. And that is step number two. After this, acetyl-CoA is going to enter what's called the Krebs cycle. So over here we have step number three, which is the Krebs cycle. In the Krebs cycle, acetyl is going to enter the cycle and go around and be converted into like 10 different things. 
We don't care what those are. We're just knowing that acetyl-CoA is gonna go in. But as soon as it enters in, it's gonna lose some weight and it's gonna get rid of its CoA. So coenzyme A is out and it's gonna be recycled again in the conversion reaction. So we're not gonna talk about it after that. The acetyl keeps going around and being converted and converted and converted into a bunch of different molecules. During its conversion process in the Krebs cycle, it actually gives off carbon and it's released as carbon dioxide. We breathe it out. It's all the carbon dioxide that you make, that you breathe out every second, comes from the Krebs cycle and the conversion reaction of cellular respiration. Acetyl is going to keep being converted, 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 and as it happens, we get electrons and protons that are going to get ripped off the molecules. So we're going to have NAD plus come in, pick them up, and be called NADH. And then during the process, we're actually going to make a couple ATP from ADP. We're going to add on the third phosphate to make some energy. And then finally, over here, we actually have two electrons and two protons that need picked up. We have a new carrier called FAD. He's going to pick up these guys and form FADH2. And that's a Krebs cycle. And so those are the things that are going to be made during that process. Now, in the very end over here, we have the very last step called the electron transport chain, the ETC. The main thing with the electron transport chains is that we need electrons. So where are we going to get these electrons? From our electron carriers. Now we have a bunch of electron carriers that we got. So let's go back. So we have NADH right here. This is going to come over and drop off its electrons. We have NADH here from the conversion reaction. And that's going to come over and drop off its electrons. We have NADH from Krebs, and that's going to come on and drop off its electrons. And we're going to have FADH2 drop off its electrons. And so all those molecules come here and they drop off their electrons and they drop off their protons. Now the electrons are going to go for a ride on the electron transport chain. So these, are, these circles represent a bunch of proteins stuck in the inner membrane. In the inner membrane of the mitochondria, those proteins pass them along like hot potatoes, like I talked about in class. So they get bumped and then they get passed, passed down and down and down, these proteins. As the electrons get passed down, they start off with a whole lot of energy at the top, lots of energy, like hot electrons, hot potatoes. But then they're kind of cold and energyless at the end because they lose energy as they get passed along. That energy actually uses the protons to help create a whole lot of ATP. So we're going to get the most of our ATP right here. But at the end, we have electrons and we even have leftover protons that are kind of just waiting around. They're done being used, but they're not useful. They're not useless. We're going to get oxygen gas that we breathe in. It's going to come in, pick up the protons and electrons, and when it combines with those, it's combining with hydrogens. And when oxygen and hydrogen combine, we get H2O. And so that's a waste product that we get rid of, potentially. And so those are the steps of what we call aerobic respiration. If we back up over here and we talk about what happens if there's no oxygen available. So there's no O2. So if this way there's oxygen and this way there's no oxygen, well, this is called anaerobic respiration. This way is called aerobic. This way is called anaerobic. And we know that it's also known as fermentation. And there's two types. So instead of pyruvate becoming acetyl-CoA, pyruvate's going to become of, become one of two things. If it's alcoholic fermentation, it's going to become ethanol and carbon dioxide. If it's lactic acid fermentation, it's going to form lactic acid. This happens in us in our muscle cells or in certain types of bacteria. Alcoholic fermentation happens in bacteria and some, yeast, some types of yeast. And so it really depends on what organism it is on which they're going to do. But either way, there's no oxygen, it's anaerobic, it's fermentation. Pyruvate is going to be converted into one of these two things. But in its conversion into one of those two things, 
NADH that was made in glycolysis, it usually wants to go over here to the electron transport chain, but it can't. It's not allowed inside the mitochondria because there's no oxygen. So instead, it's going to drop off its two electrons and its protons that it originally picked up, and when it drops it off, it forms NAD plus again. Now that there's more NAD plus, glucose can continue making pyruvate, which means that we're going to still get at least a couple ATP made at all times because glycolysis happens no matter what, or oxygen or no oxygen. But if there's oxygen, we make a lot more ATP, 32 total. Remember, we make 32 ATP for every glucose molecule aerobically, but anaerobically, you have to keep breaking down glucose and just getting two ATP until there's enough oxygen available. And the main thing is that anaerobic respiration regenerates NAD+, so glycolysis could keep making pyruvate. And so it's, that's why there's a cycle right in here. All right. Another thing, make sure as you're studying, you know glucose. What make sure you know what step it's used in and what happens to it. So if I ask you glucose, you'd be like, okay, it's broken down in glycolysis into pyruvate. Where do we get it from? Well, we get it from the food that we eat, or if you're a plant, like photoautotroph, then you're going to do photosynthesis, et cetera, or an autotroph. If I say, all right, where does um, oxygen come from? Here's oxygen. Know that we breathe it in. It's a product of photosynthesis, and it's only used as a final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain to make water. Now, the things that are made, again, I'm going over the equation. C6, H12, O6, plus O2. I'm not balancing it. Carbon dioxide, water, ATP. All right? Using glycolysis to make pyruvate. We get it from the food that we eat or that we make because we're an autotroph. Oxygen comes into play in the ETC, helps make water. It's a final electron acceptor. Carbon dioxide, well, we make carbon dioxide in the conversion and in Krebs cycle. It's a waste product. We breathe it out. Water, water's made in the electron transport chain when oxygen combines with the protons and the electrons that have no energy at the end of the chain. And then ATP, it's made in the electron transport chain, 28. Two of it's made in Krebs. And over here, two is made in glycolysis, and you get a total of 32 ATP. So you should know where each one of those things are and where they're going and where they're used. Also know the difference between the two types of fermentation. And if you could do that, you should do fine on the test tomorrow. I hope that was helpful.